and um, I'm over in the Wimberley Library here on the Boca campus. So first of all, as educators, we all love to have objectives. And um, so this is a concept map um, showing today's objectives to identify concept map or mind map format. Um, and there can be multiple formats for these. We'll go into that. Um, describe the possible uses within a course. That's something that we'd all like to be able to see how we can use it. Review concept mapping resources. And we do have some for you. And this is something that we'll be able to send out to you also mm -hmm. as a um, PDF. In fact, this whole set of slides. So you'll have that information. You don't have to take as many notes as you thought you might. And then we are also going to have you create your own concept map today. That's why we ask you to have paper and pencil. So first of all, what are concept maps? And um, they are basically a graphic organizer, we mentioned being visual. And so there's a way to be able to represent knowledge of a subject. It's also a way to be able to walk somebody through to see all the different aspects of a particular topic. And um, it is definitely a metacognitive tool. Um, it is used to visually illustrate relationships. and. I say visually because you can do it with the words, with the lines, and you could also, in most cases, add images if you wanted to. So that becomes even more visually uh, stimulating. And so the concepts um, that are shown typically can be linked by words or phrases to give them a little bit more. Um, Judy, help me with my word here. <laughs> The, to show the relationships. Thank you. And that's what it's all about. It's relationships. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, my, my brain doesn't always work when it should. Can you define metacognitive tool? Yeah, it's a metacognition is when we reflect on our own thinking. And so a concept oh, okay. map gives you a visual, uh, reflect on our learning, reflect on our thinking. It gives you the visual for thinking about how we think. And you're going to be able to see that as you work with your own concept map today. Um, you definitely will be able to see that. Um, so let's take a quick look here. And this is um, just one way that you might be able to see a concept map looking. Uh, typically, you're going to see lines. There may be arrows, maybe not. Um, you're going to have boxes or other shapes um, oftentimes. You may have visuals, could be pictures, could be icons. And they're going to give a sense of um, going from that central idea and then going to a sub idea. And then I consider it kind of branches and twigs. Um, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and so it's you're able to see a lot of the uh, different uh, ideas. Notice on this one here on the right hand side towards the bottom, you're seeing little dotted lines indicating that there is even a relationship between things in the bottom, the synonyms and then um, the items on the right, the properties. And so oftentimes you'll be able to see that with concept maps where it's not just a straight one, uh, one relationship um, going only one way, but there may be multiple relationships. Um, that's one of the reasons that I like them because it really helps me to be able to think through things. So let's um, take a quick look here at educators. I know that this is something you're interested in. How would you be able to use concept maps these are just a few of the ideas. Um, lesson preparation. Um, and as you get into making your own concept map, you're going to be able to see how it helps pull some ideas out as you're working on it. Um, delivering lessons. So as you're delivering lessons, it's a great way to be able to present concepts and be able to show the relationships between uh, different concepts. And this is good for all different types of subject areas that you're working in. Um, you could use it for curriculum planning. In fact, we've got one of our resources talks about how to do that yes. and gives yeah. an example. Um, creating handouts. This is a wonderful thing, too, to be able to give a handout. And um, we know that people oftentimes will take a handout and they'll write on it mm -hmm. also. And so this is a way for them to be able to take something that you've prepared. You're showing them basic relationships, but yeah. then they can put their own sense of understanding um, as they write on there also. Um, encouraging discussion and independent thought, and it really does. And especially if you do this collaboratively, right. you can do um, concept maps either individually on your own, 
or you can do them as a group. It can be a group project, and we will be talking about some of the um, different programs that allow you to do things collaboratively. And so that's a great way because we're always talking about our students need to know how to work collaboratively when they go out into the real world. Yeah. And this is a great way for them to be able to do that and to be able to um, share ideas and kind of uh, be able to cross-pollinate um, with their ideas as well as um, to be able to reconcile what they're thinking with little nuance that somebody else mm -hmm. may be thinking. Mm -hmm. um, study aids. These are a wonderful review tool. You, students can make them up or you could have some as review tools um, or for studying just getting concepts. Um, they, you could even create one and have certain items that are left blank. Uh, right. So you want for yeah. students to put in those main ideas and follow through and uh, get information written down. Um, they're wonderful for student assessment. There are some examples in here that I did um, from a graduate um, courses in education, uh, which were <laughs> very extensive. So don't yeah, be put so off a little, by them. Yeah, <laughs> a, little, a little over, a little overwhelming. But I just I have discovered that uh, as a as a student assessment tool. It's a great way to pick up on students' misconceptions too, because if they if they show a relationship that we know is not a, an accurate one, it jumps right out at you. So it's a great way to see misconceptions or see things that they did not pick up, and and it's it's a, again a visual all in one page type of thing. And it's really wonderful too, because we always wonder: Are students getting things? Do they truly understand, or are they just kind of copying from what they saw somebody else? Do. And this is a great way for them to be able to actually show um, what they know. Um, Self-evaluation. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what we're going to be having you do in your concept mm -hmm. map. Um, so you'll get a taste of that. And visual literacy. I can't say enough about how our students need to be visually literate. They have so much from a media standpoint that they're looking at, and they have to be able to um, take that and digest it. And this is one way for them to be able to digest things. And um, so we'll, we'll talk about different things. If you have questions too, please go ahead, bring those up. And um, Ashley is manning the chat. Or if you want to raise your hand, we're happy to take questions also. Yeah. And I'm going to jump back into the very first one you said on lesson preparation. In all, my, all the time that I have been teaching, a, a concept map is how I do my lesson plans. That's what I have to do to visualize and see where I'm going from, from one step to the next. That has always been my, uh, my go-to format. And I love hearing about how other people do things. Um, hopefully within the resources, you're going to get some ideas from there too, as well as being able to know that you can go back and pick Judy's brain since she uses <laughs> this. So let me just go to this next one. Okay, be prepared. We're going completely different here. <laughs> this is your brain full of connections. And um, we are wired to make these connections. Absolutely. And um, mind maps are wired for connections. So this is a mind map. Um, notice we found this from Wikimedia. This was a Creative Commons um, 3.0, which is a public domain item. And they said, you do not have to give attribution, but if you would, it would be nice because the person who made this would really like to have people know that he made it. Um, so you'll see that there are some places where we've put attributions, others we have not, but anything that we have in here um, is a uh, public domain or a one that we were not required to give attribution. So um, we want you to be aware of that, especially as a librarian, I wanna make sure that I'm doing things correctly. Well, and this one is such a great one because it, it, it graphically, visually gives you all the key points about making them. That that's a, a personal style thing that typically they start in the middle and, and, and work out and around. When I'm doing them, I typically go around in a clockwise format, but I, that's just mine. I don't know if there's a... Uh, specific way of doing it. But through the use of this visual, it shows you with the thicker lines and the thinner lines, shows you different colors, uh, how to how to focus on different things by going 
uppercase, lowercase, or smaller font, uh, changing the font, changing the size, changing the colors in there, and like you said, having those dotted lines uh, showing linkages from, from one place to another, using the visuals to, to, to bring out, uh, emphasize different pieces of it. So that's a great one. Obviously, I love that one. <laughs> well, I like the top left because it shows you that you if you like to work with things in order, it's possible to just do things with straight lines. But you'll see that a lot of mind maps will end up using curved lines. Yes. Um, and so this kind of gives you the opportunity for both of these um, because we don't always think of things as having a specific order because some may be as important as others. We don't necessarily want to have them in an order. And so um, by changing this around, um, whether it's a straight line or a curved line, we're able to accommodate our own way of thinking about these things. At the bottom um, left, it talks about codes. And so you can also set up your mind map so that um, you are using codes within it or a key within it. So if you want for anything that's in yellow to represent a person and anything yeah. that's in green to represent um, a plant or a thing or whatever, you can do that and it makes it much easier for yourself and for those looking at it to be able to see that key and be able to understand the components very quickly. So, oh my goodness. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Something happened when it went into, uh, uh, yes. into this format. There are a lot of different um, programs that are out there. Some you can use collaboratively. MindMeister is one of them. MindMup, MindMup um, also works very well being integrated into Google Docs um, or Google Slides. Wise Mapping is an open source one. Uh, Poplet, a lot of you may have heard of Poplet or even used it. That's a very simple one to use. Um, and keep in mind, this will be, um, and not in this nasty format, but this will be a decent <laughs> format for you um, when it's sent to you. Uh, with the slides. So you'll send, you'll send this. We will send this. Oh, we will yeah, send absolutely. the whole set of slides. Mm -hmm. We'll have it make sure it's Excellent. Window. I can stop taking so many notes. Don't, yes, yeah, don't take so many don't, notes. Don't need to. Um, educators in doing things on a solo basis, a lot of them have used inspiration. And inspiration is very nice because like a lot of these other ones also, you can take import, um, say things that are in outline format into the program or export mm -hmm. um, what you did as a mind map into an outline. Um, Coggle is another one of these, Bubble Us, Simple Mind. Um, one that's not showing on the bottom there is uh, Lucid Chart. Lucid Chart also is available on Chrome as a um, uh, app. And you can also use it in Google Slides as an app. Um, one of those add-ons that they call it at the top. So there are lots of different ways that you can integrate things into what you're already using. And when you think about that Lucid chart, then saying it could be integrated into um, Google Sheets or Google Slides rather, you probably could use that collaboratively also if you were doing things in a team just by giving the permissions. So there are all kinds of different workarounds um, for a lot of these. So if you find you like one versus another, what we're showing here, all of these are free, but of course we know that if it's free, it probably is also not the one not that's the full. Yeah, it's not super high powered. Many, um, do they have ads? So um, I don't believe that many of them would have ads in them. Um, this is an example, um, and I know it's very faded, but this is from their website. So MindMeister, if you actually crawl into the pricing, you'll see that they do have educators' prices. And some of these um, do have educator prices, some of them do not. Um, but this makes it kind of nice because you may save, instead of paying $6 a month, you could pay $2.50 a month if this is your preferred way of being able to use this. What I suggest is always use the basic, try that. Some of them just say you can only do three of these in a month right. or you can only do three total. But this is a great way to be able to get used to um, the different styles that are available. Mm -hmm. Some of them also, like I was working with Lucid Chart last night, allowed me to go ahead and bring in my own vector images and I'll be able to point out the ones that I brought in. So it's nice because you're not necessarily limited to what they actually have within their program. Do you have a question? Yes. 
I look at as high as you may adjust if you're on the seminar, but are there any online content mapping resources available through FAU Canvas site so that we can pull it up into a course we download? Um, actually, the one that I would recommend is probably just using PowerPoint. And um, I'll show you um, some, I think I have an example in here later okay. of something that I had done in PowerPoint also. But you can just use the shapes. You could do the same thing in Word. You just use your shapes, your connectors, et cetera. Um, same thing would work if you're using Google um, Suite. Mm -hmm. And we can, we can check and see if there are any of the ones that are listed um, as an LTI for Canvas. Too. Absolutely. And that would be good for us to know, too. Yes. <laughs> So keep questions coming. So what are our basic features of concept maps? Um, before we have you do one of your own, we want to just quickly go through some of these. So colors we've mentioned. You can color code mm -hmm. things as you want um, and make it easier for your eye to follow. Choosing different fonts, that's another way to get you seeing that there are things grouped in different yeah. ways. Um, hyperlinks, you can, and in most of these programs, you can use hyperlinks. So if you're doing it digitally, um, you can make it so somebody can then follow and get a definition, go somewhere else to get additional information. Images, keywords, uh, the organic branches using the curves instead of the straight lines, um, showing relationships between branches. We saw that with dotted lines. Um, I'm sorry, with straight lines or curved lines, and then the relationships within the maps using the dotted mm -hmm. lines. Um, using the thick or thin branches, upper or lowercase letters, really kind of the sky's the limit as far as how you want to um, set things up and the, the different tools that you'd like to uh, use to make things your own. And many of the online ones you can add, uh, you can bring in websites, you can bring in videos. I know with, uh, with Poplet I've done that where there's video, one of them links to a video, one of them links to websites. So there's ways of, of uh, incorporating images and uh, documents and all kinds of things in them. And actually embedding them in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Now, curves and relationships is it, um, between branches and such is something you could not do in a PowerPoint. You could. You could. Yes. Yes, okay. yeah. you could. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can do. Um, you can do just about anything in that, mm -hmm. which yeah. is nice. Yeah. Um, the more these companies find that somebody else is doing it, the more they're going to make it that you can do it in their program. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so how are you going to get a start? First thing is to brainstorm. And we've got um, something to, in the next slide or two to be able to show you, give you something to brainstorm on today. Um, paper. Some people use Post-its. Um, they like that because they can move things around. You could also use different color Post-its. Um, or you could just dive into an online program. Most of them are pretty easy to use. They do have help and they have tutorials and most of them are built pretty much the same. Um, branches, twigs, so you're going to be going out. Um, move things around, change line thicknesses. When I've been working on concept maps, I typically am working on one thing and then I think of something else and I go back and I change it yeah. or I say, oh my gosh, that really goes better over here. Um, show relationships. Those relationships that you see are those ones that you want to be able to capture in the concept map. Mm -hmm. um, refine it, add color, add images if you want. If you've um, used color or uh, shapes or whatever to indicate things, create a key. Make life easy on yourself or somebody else. You, <laughs> next time you go back to it, you'll know yeah. what you did. Yeah. Then save it, print it, share it. Most of these will allow you to um, save as PDF as um, multiple types of images, the PNG, um, JPG, J, JPEG, SV, um, SVG, which yeah. is the uh, vector. Um, by the way, Inkscape, I believe, is the name of the program. It's a free program, and that will read your um, vector images. So if you have something that in that format, and then you can take it, and you can save it as a PNG or a JPEG. So that's a really nice little tool. I actually use that in creating things. What was it in the extension? It's called Inkscape. All is one word. But that's been very useful. So this was my trial using Lucidchart. I've never used it before. I used a template. Um, and their template did not have all the craziness that mine had. They had four different 
stalks coming out of here, one, two, three, four, and then I, I ran with it. Um, you can see that I did shapes. I, um, this is where I had imported some of the different um, vector images. And so I added those in as I thought. I made a change in shape here. I added color. I um, was able to do a curve line here and then I couldn't do it. And I thought, well, okay, we'll, we'll just go ahead and we'll do this type of line. And then I couldn't do that one again. So I did this. Um, so there are all kinds of ways to be able to uh, put things together. We're not going to ask you to do that right off the bat. Okay. Instead, we want you to take something like this. Um, you all know about yourself. And so this should be fairly easy. Um, again, it's that um, your metacognitive. Yep, aspect. thinking about yourself and, 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 and your approach to things. So we're just going to ask you to do that on a on a, on a piece of paper, just take a minute and uh, and write some things out. And and we're going to try to do it on a whiteboard here, um, so you won't think that we're not Abigail, doing anything. Abigail, could you share some paper with our two oh, sure. other guests, please? Okay, so hopefully you are seeing the whiteboard. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and let's see if I know how to use this. Well, you might want to. Go back and show them what you had in. The show it again. Okay, I'm happy yeah. to do that. If so I it's can... just a matter of thinking about yourself and the and the roles, the different roles that you play and the different components of. Let's see how I got back there again. Now I'm. Now we're still I'm... we're still seeing the whiteboard, so you're okay. Okay. Uh, Come back up. Here, up there. What about down here? No, this guy. Yeah, there we are. Okay, so that's the whiteboard. Now, oh, this was then going. That goes back to the map. There we go. Okay, so um, image, uh, if you like. I happen to have um, two children and a daughter in law, so she gets uh, a part of the mom picture there. Um, and I Put a few other things in here. Um, I knew I wouldn't be able to. Oh, I can write in here. Well, let so me change my color. Then I can do it at the same time. Let's see if it will let me. No, it's it's got a light color. I don't know that it's going to make make it here. It's just to give you an idea of, of starting on some things and then adding uh, adding different parts of it as you're going. I'll just leave this part off then. Yeah, and uh, so I'm also we're also going to invite you to uh, Go back into uh, into Slido in just a moment too. So while you are drawing and writing there, so mine shows things on the right and the left. Yours may show things all over um, the entire space there. Mine's a circle. Yours could be some other shape. We know that as you're writing, things are stationary, but just think if you had it in post-its or you were doing it online, mm -hmm. how you could move things around. So anybody in the room with us or online want to share some, some of your thoughts and ideas about, I see some grins in here. <laughs> She said you could also do a backwards mind map as well. You complete the map and students explain the relationship. Absolutely. Ooh, yes. Absolutely. Great idea. Yeah. 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 It's all about the backwards design. Anybody want to share your thoughts, your ideas? Abigail. I mapped out text constructions, which is one of the projects that we work on here at the Center for E-Learning, instead of myself. <laughs> and on, I have 
three branches, organization, outflow, and chapters. Okay, so hold on just a second because they probably can't hear you. No, they can. Oh, they can? Yeah. Okay, perfect. This is a, my it's voice a great is not loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a mic. It's a, it's a very sensitive it's a mic. mic. Um, and then with organization, I have Center for E-Learning Meetings, a library consultations, and there we go. And then an outflow, Creative Commons registration, repository identification. And then my third branch is chapters and sections, and, the, uh, and I can just keep going. And what, what intrigues me is I think that as you were putting things down, more stuff came into your mind as far as where to put them and what other things to add to it, and yet it's all right there in front of you in one page. Yeah, yes, it does become dimensional and movable, transportable. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's also, when you're thinking about updating your CV, you know how your department head will say they want an updated CV for people, and you think, what have I done? And it's a great way to be able to get you to remember because mm -hmm. you have those oh. connections. Yeah. 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 CV update app. Yeah. 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 I cringe when they ask me. They say, "Can you get that to me next week?" I'm like, "What did I do?" <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else in here want to share? Renaud? Yeah. <laughs> it's um, essentially a, 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 a copy of your format on on this. So I kind of put the uh, initials in the. In the, in the middle, and I guess on the top of all this goes uh, my uh, social role as a dad with the uh, uh, two daughters. Um, I guess even <laughs> on the on the on the higher um, end of this. Uh, then uh, does come the I guess the professional affiliation with uh, being political scientist. Um, the, yeah, social roles, husband, son, and then uh, some uh, political and. Um, I guess national affiliation, so uh, uh, liberal, Tatar, European, uh, American, uh, again, ties into the uh, research, which is both professionally driven, but also, uh, I guess, uh, has uh, something to do with uh, um, just my, 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 my interpersonal sure. uh, mm -hmm. yeah. map and, yeah. and, and, and cognition going into the, I guess, the book project, and uh, again, more to come. Nice, nice, yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, so while we're talking in here, Laurie, if you'll um, open up, so if, go show yeah. them the next um, Slido poll, and they can be responding to that while okay. we're interacting in That's here. That's an excellent idea. So, uh, so they can go to the exact same place they went, and this is a new poll that will show up when they put in yep. the event number It's B203. open now. Okay. And so this is just um, getting you to... Um, come up with some different ideas of what you think you could use concept maps for for inside your um, your canvas space, your online class, especially. Mm -hmm. um, we know we can use it face to face also, but we want to be looking especially at the online uh, component. So anybody else in here want to share what you've uh, what you've done on your maps? Or somebody who's or online as mm -hmm. well, the group that we have joining us. Oh, well, I just really <laughs> just it became very intertwined very quickly. It does. Um, you know, I, especially about oneself. Uh, I, I realized that friend includes my husband and my mom. It includes my friends from church. It includes my colleagues, my old friends, my Twitter buddies. Um, my scholarship is related to my work as a professor, but also to my religious identity since I teach mm -hmm. religious studies mm -hmm. and my non-scholarly writing. Uh, and I have one book project, which is actually halfway between my non-scholarly writing and my scholarly writing. All right. And uh, yeah, it just, it seems my life is even more intertwined than I thought it was. <laughs> isn't that, isn't that <laughs> interesting. That's, 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 a, that's a fascinating piece of that. And, and I see we're getting some responses in the poll. Thank you for that. Lots of great ideas for using them in the classroom. Anybody else want to share? If nobody else wants to share right now, I'm going to give them another minute or two to work on um, the on Slido. The and okay. in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and um, let them know some of the resources <laughs> that they're going to have here All right. just to make sure that we get through and they, they yes. know what they're getting content-wise. Yes. Um, this was a wonderful 
um, mind map that somebody made, not me, on how mind maps help teachers, um, looking at it from planning, research, lectures, uh, collaboration and assessment, collaboration with the students. Um, had some ideas that we'd already talked about, um, as well as some that I had not even thought about until yeah. I started reading this. <laughs> There's a lot of information um, in that one. But again, this will kind of give you different ideas as you see something and you say that would absolutely work with this particular class and the content that I'm teaching and what I want to be able to get out of the assessment or uh, working with the students, have them work collaboratively, whatever. Um, this is uh, another use um, with concept maps. Um, Can I make this full screen? So while we're checking on that, um, this is just putting uh, words into wordcloud.com and they give you different shapes and they gave me different backgrounds. Yeah. Um, the items that were put in there were um, from a list that had been compiled um, that somebody was presenting in an article. And so I took those words and said, get rid of all of the D yeah. and A and whatever. And um, so that's how that turned out. Um, I think it, it yeah, captured yeah, a lot of good ones. You do. And most of us have seen and used word clouds okay, before. It's another, um, it's another, it's another tool. It's another graphic organizer and a way of okay. visualizing uh, the ideas. And particularly where most of the word clouds show either larger words or or, or uh, a uh, bolder font, things that are mentioned more than once. So it gives you ideas on, on how those things are used. Some of the word clouds even are interactive where you can click on them and, and uh, use it in the classroom. So uh, a word cloud is indeed another form of a map or a hmm. graphic organizer that works beautifully. Okay, we have a comment from Lisa. She says our spell blueprint is also a type of mind map. Mapping out the course alignment between the concept, objectives, assessments, and goals. Wow. Yes, and 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 we have another uh, we have another way of sharing that as well that that I'll uh, that we'll share at a later date that uh, that truly is the blueprint set up as a uh, as a concept map, which I love the idea on that. So. Um, these were different types of maps. I did not come up with this um, myself. Chuck Frey um, happens to have a blog on mind mapping software where he takes a look at software. And so you'll see um, his, um, he is being attributed to uh, down there. Um, I put these in alphabetical order. These are just a few. And just think about this with regard to the different um, areas that we're teaching in. We have some educators here in College of Education. We have some from religion. Um, we have some online. Political science. Uh, political science. We have Literature, business. Literature, I'm thinking of particularly for my class. So I, I look at SWOT analysis and I think business and I think, oh, yeah, that would do it. Um, pyramid charts are a great way too with business or organizational charts. Um, Judy had mentioned when we were talking um, about taking notes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, anytime I'm at a, at a conference or even in church, <laughs> I, I use a, a concept map for, for taking my notes and, and putting everything into, a, into a, a visual with connections and everything. Yeah, especially at conferences. I love doing it at conferences. I'm, I'm not quite a, as skilled at it as some that we've seen, but there's some great ones out there. Um, think about when you're doing something that is going to be repetitious, you've got the circular flow or the mm -hmm. cycles, um, any kind of flow chart, um, hierarchy, uh, infographics also can be a form of a concept map. Mm -hmm. um, timelines. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Venn diagrams. So you mm -hmm. see the relationships between multiple things that are in contact with each other. So instead of using lines, you might show um, what happens when they actually come together. Um, we've gotten quite a few responses uh, in the in the poll. I don't know if we want to. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and want to look at that or if you want to go ahead and look at some of your uh, fairly intriguing concept mapping well, examples. I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and just show the 
concept map examples, um, just so you can know that they're there. Um, okay. Try to put down graduate class, what level this was at, um, what was being accomplished. This was a comparison, and um, this was done with a key at the top also, uh, so that there was a, an idea right. as far as how mm -hmm. to find things. So people um, were in one color, theories were in another, et cetera. Um, I was able to add shadowing so I could make some of the boxes look a little bit darker yeah. uh, in the corners. Um, I was able to show relationships across groups and within groups. This was done in inspiration. Um, I've got another one that was a comparison, rather extensive. Yeah. Um, I needed a visual, so John Dewey came up to the top. Um, but this was basically comparing two things, universal design for learning versus uh, John Dewey's progressive educational theory. And again, using colors so that people could pick out on either side um, what I was going to be talking about. And um, also uh, changing in some cases, whether things were going backwards or forwards. So you can see that some of these programs will allow you when you look down here, yeah. you see some blue items are going a different direction because it just made sense to have them go that way. They didn't work correctly um, from a space. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, a lot of data, a lot of information on that page, isn't there? Um, and before I go back to it, because we'll make our final thing be the going back to the um, slide. Um, wanted to bring up that there are going to be resources here. These are all hyperlinked, so you'll be able to see that. You can also go to uh, Wikimedia look for concept maps, go to Google, do your topic, put concept map in quotation marks so it finds it as a phrase. You could do it with uh, Bing, um, any of these. Kathy Schrock's concept mapping, although she's known a lot for K-12, she has excellent ideas and she follows through. Uh, Jean Maripati has an excellent um, resource um, and just tons and tons of things. All of these ones that say that they um, are down here, uh, mind map exercise, just lots of things to be able to, to do, and these have examples. So you may see an example for political science. Um, so those will be kind of fun. And again, all of this information will be sent out to everyone who's participating so that you'll have, you'll have it uh, in the documents as well as the, uh, the results from the polls too. And Judy, I told you, you um, you could do a little advertising here. I could do, here. A, little, I could do a, a little love promo. Yeah. I just wanted to remind uh, everyone, whether you're connected with FAU or not, that we uh, that the uh, e-certification workshop is we're we're promoting that. I know some of you are here because of that, and and we want you to uh, we enjoy having everyone involved with it. Um, and invite you to share it with your with your colleagues. So our workshop is a provides pedagogical foundation and research based uh, found focus for the online com uh, for the components of, of teaching in an online course. And so we're going to be doing uh, another orientation on June the third, and or, and and that's also available uh, individually as well. So. That's my little. That's my little promo. We invite everyone to uh, join us in that. In that, uh, it's an adventure. <laughs> it is. Really it's is. a fun adventure. I've, it is. I completed it. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look at at your uh, at your poll and see what kind of comments we have. There's a lot of great ones in there. Give us just a tour, or just a second here to get us in the right place. Look back it's... over on the left at the top. No, the next, oh, yeah, there you no. go. Let's see. And then full screen. Okay. And you're going to need to scroll down. So outlining main ideas of text and details to support those main ideas. That's a great way, too, as students are mm -hmm. reviewing textbooks. I'm still getting live poll type another answer, even though I refreshed. Are you in the um, slide? Okay. Then what you want to do is you want to go back to the um, question to the webinar. Okay. And that should take you back so you'll see what I have on ah, the screen. Okay, I got it. Okay. You've already put it in, yeah. yeah. Um, using con concept maps as a 
summative assessment or reflection. And um, that's mm -hmm. something that um, Judy and I were talking about. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, how that can just be really a great way to be able to do that study guides, um, introducing new content, collaborative work. I love it for collaborative. Um, it makes it so that, oh, and we found out too, sometimes you come up with too many ideas and they don't really go somewhere. And so somebody <laughs> brought up the concept of a junk drawer. And you know how you have a junk drawer at home and it has all those things you don't want to get rid of because you know they're valuable. <laughs> but they don't really go in one of the other spots, right? right? And so, <laughs> so we thought, you know, this is a really good idea. When you're doing concept maps, sometimes you may need to have that junk drawer um, philosophy. Yeah. And also, if you're working towards objectives, if you're using this for mm -hmm. lesson plans, um, you may find things may not work exactly the way that you wanted, but all of a sudden something in that junk drawer may turn into an activity or something else that you could actually use with that course. Um, tying things together, connecting themes. I think that's a very difficult thing to do. We always want to yes. have that, that yes. segue. Um, always relating to course objectives, showing topics. Um, it's just it's a whole inviting way of being it able is. to present things. It really um, is. Which is really nice. Putting it in the syllabus, that would be really neat. Instead, Ooh, of, instead yeah. of it looking like a bunch oh. of words to put it in the syllabus, I don't know who put that down, but kudos. Yeah, that's, we need to try that one out. <laughs> uh, defining literary genres, absolutely. Um, I've seen people do this too with, um, and there are some um, sites that are listed here in the example, so you can see what others have done. People have done this for English grammar, French grammar, yes. you'll see things in all yes. different uh, languages. Uh, definitely showing relationships. Scaffolding, that's one of the biggest things that I, yes. I see it being used for yeah. with students, is for them to be able to um, have that scaffolding. Um, and then have some place to put all the new things that keep coming in. Oh, that goes with this one over here. Oh, wait a minute, that goes over here. <laughs> but this is even better because this says scaffold an introduction to research methodology. Yeah. And goodness, you definitely need that. Yeah. Um, study guides, new content. I don't know if I'm going back. Identifying physics misconceptions. Hmm. Very neat. Convey yeah. historical relationships. And yes, using a timeline um, mm -hmm. definitely would do that. Um, yeah, I've done timelines several times with them and they work out really, really well because it's, it's you can you can see the uh, see the flow. Well, and you can also you can have the time in the center, you can have one group of things that are happening, like mm -hmm. something that happened politically, but then you can also have things that people would recognize because they always heard about this was this era, this was th that era, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And it helps them be able to put things together. Mm -hmm. And just so that you know, we are also going to, when we send out the information about the session today, we will send you the results of these two polls too, so that you have access to that information sure. too. Yes. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, we have some, had some really great ideas. Thank you all for joining us and for uh, for taking being such an active taking such an active part in it. Um, it, it concept maps are a, absolutely a, a key thing for me, and uh, and I never know for sure. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people that brains don't work quite the same way mine does. So I'm delighted to know that there's a bunch of you, a bunch of us interested in it. Thank you. And thank you, Lori, again, as always, for Thanks. being such a, fun. a, a dynamic speaker and having so much to share with us. Well, we appreciate and that. And everybody in here was sharing too and yes. online. So that makes it yeah. a lot more yeah. fun. Thank you. Thank so you we truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us today.